Do you avoid making videos, doing Facebook Lives and doing things where maybe you need to be on camera because maybe you kind of feel like, oh, it's never going to be perfect. You let perfectionism get in your way or maybe I'm just not quite sure what to talk about. And so if you're avoiding doing videos for any of those reasons and things that just don't need to really be in the way, then this is definitely going to be the episode for you. I'm going to give you three of the easiest and quickest videos that you can do. Things that you can do very simply that don't even necessarily need you to be on camera. So you can actually start being visible, showing up more for your audience so they can see you, see what awesomeness you have to offer them and help you really grow that audience and influence with them. So this is going to be the episode that's going to really help you out with this topic. So definitely stick around for this whole thing. Join in the conversation and let's talk about how we can get you doing videos easily. So welcome everyone. Like I say, my name is Jenny Stevens. This is your Brilliantly You business show that I do every single week to come to you with various different trainings, tips, things that work for me and my business that are all around helping you with your marketing and your mindset so you can be brilliantly you in your business, have the strategies to do things your way that work for you and have the mindset to really help you move forward with that with confidence. So I love talking about leveraging your time, using automation systems, and then it's really that mindset piece. I'm a qualified rapid transformational therapist, so I love to kind of help you to release those limiting beliefs and those blocks that get in the way. And I do that from my own personal experience. I realized how much we can stand in our own way and self-sabotage our businesses. And so it's really something that I'm so passionate about helping people to just get out of that way and help you to shine and help you to be confident doing what you're doing and build your business so you can build that business around your lifestyle that you want. So that's what I do. Do say hello if you are here with me live, comment in where you are watching from today. And if you're watching this on the replay, still comment in and let me know where you're watching from and I'll go back and reply to all comments as soon as I can. Videos is one of those things that can be sometimes crippling. It can be one of those things that people avoid doing for so many different reasons. And so if you're here and you're watching this because you find yourself avoiding doing them, then I really want to be able to help kind of empower you and inspire you to do things in maybe some different ways. I'm going to give you a few simple and quick things that you can do where you can start putting yourself on video and showing you, showing your products and services, letting people know who you are and that you are there. So you're not just kind of hiding in the shadows. All right. Obviously, I do videos. I do this live video every single week. So doing videos, I've been fairly confident at doing for quite some time. But there are still times when I find myself sort of slightly shying away. And there's been times where I haven't wanted to show up and I haven't wanted to do videos. Or we can just kind of overthink it as well. And so that's what I really want to help you with today to let you know some of the things that I do purposely because it helps me get it done and in a way that really gets that perfectionism out of the way. So hopefully this will help you as well. So the very first thing that I want to sort of help you with when it comes to getting going, you know, just starting to do some simple videos is start small and simple. Okay. So like if I was going back, if I was just starting my business now, kind of knowing what I know now after six and a half years, then I would probably start with this one. And that is using stories. So using the stories feature in Facebook, Instagram, it's a great way to get started. And here's why. One, they are short and sweet. You know, you can make them as short, as sweet, as long, as visible as you want to be in them as you want. They go away after 24 hours, which is great. So if you do fuck up, if you do make a, an idiot of yourself, if you do fluff over your words, if you do 
fall over. Like I've almost tripped up when I've done a, <laughs> a story when I was walking in the field a few weeks ago. Like whatever the reason, if you feel like, oh, I just don't like it, they only last for 24 hours. So it's a great way to just put yourself out there, share a message with somebody and not worry about it too much because they can be gone after 24 hours. So I love using stories. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't have to be like this is a very sort of planned and thought out video that I do every single week. But the cool thing with stories is it can be a real mixture of you. It's a great chance for you to not only, you know, you can give some tips if you want to, but you can also share more of your life, the behind the scenes, you know, who is the person behind the account? Who is the person behind the offers? And, you know, you can even do stories where you're not on camera. You know, it, you can do things where you can either do some kind of written ones. You can do things where you can have a voiceover. You know, you even, you might sh flip your screen around and show things. If anyone is here is in the UK and follows Mrs. Hinch, she's like a cleaning um, sort of or home organizee person that we just love here in the UK. And she started out not showing herself on camera. She basically built a huge following of people by cleaning, shining her sink, you know, dusting and, and just having some fun with it. And it was just her filming and cleaning, you know, kind of pointing outward rather than at her. And it took her a long time to actually show her face. Um, on Instagram, you know, she suffers with kind of self-esteem issues and a lot of lack of confidence and stuff. And, you know, now she does show her, her, her face, but for a long time, she didn't even, people only could hear her voice and see what she was cleaning. So I want to kind of challenge you a little bit with if, if the thought of being on camera gets you in a bit of a sweat and you're like, oh my God, this just fills you with a bit of panic, then have a think about, get curious, think about how might I be able to share my message where you can still share your voice. So I would encourage you to at least try and do, um, you know, you can use stories without being on video. I mean, you can do just kind of written bits, but this is all about video. So, you know, maybe it's just starting small where you start to do something where Maybe you're filming and the cat and the you know the camera isn't on you and it's facing the other way. Maybe you're walking around your garden or even you're sharing your screen and you're talking. But do something that just gets one step closer, one step forwards. Um, so that can be one little thing that you can do in stories. You can also just do little, you know, they can be as short as you want. They can literally just be sort of five, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Each little story segment is uh, 15 seconds. So even if you just kind of went, hey, and did a little introduction to who you are, that could be 15 seconds. Hey, I'm Jenny. I live in Dorset in the UK, southwest of England. I love cats. I'm a marketing and mindset coach. And, you know, this account, I'm going to be sharing with you tips and tricks about how to build your business online. Like you could literally just do almost like your little intro. So if you notice when I do my, if you ever watch these videos, I do a little intro. So I do uh, the, like the introduction to my topic, to the video. And then I give a little introduction to myself. And, so, you know, like your elevator pitch, if you've created one of those. So even if you just started and just recorded yourself just saying, hey, and letting people know kind of a little bit about who you are, what you do, you know, who you help and how you help them and why they should follow you. You know, you could just do something simple like that or even just starting with very simple things. So just think about how you can utilize little things like that. There are things like reels, but to be honest, they take more time. Um, so personally, I feel like doing a story is much easier than it is creating like a reel, which is, you know, Instagram's version of TikTok. Um, I'm trying to get myself into sort of doing them. And they're not, you know, I think if you're not used to doing videos and stuff, and it's probably easier for you to start just by doing some stories which are visible only to your audience. 
but it's a great way of just starting to put yourself out there. So just think about however you want to do it. Just start small and think of something simple that you can do. And stories are a great way to do that because it's, it's kind of less pressure. It's not meant to be this perfect, you know, pre-recorded amazing video. It's kind of meant for that all round, you know, behind the scenes, throughout your day, letting people know a bit more about you. There's times where I only just show a few, you know, some pictures of my cats or a few little selfies or something, um, but they can be a great way to just start with video, okay? Okay, so number two then in terms of how can you really help you to start doing videos confidently, and especially if you really want to start getting your message out there. If you're kind of maybe unsure about what to talk about, you know, and that's this is a very common in the beginning. You know, I help a lot of people who in the early stages of business and they're just starting to build their own audience and do things on social media. And so one of those big blocks is, well, what do I say? What do I talk about? So if you ever feel like that, just drop a one in the, in the comments, you know, or give you a little emoji. If you kind of ever feel like, oh, I just, I'm not quite sure what to talk about. I'm going to be real with you for a minute. Literally this morning, I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about today. I'm normally a bit more organized, but I've been promoting a workshop that I did the other day. And so it's been a bit busy. And so I've been a bit behind with planning out this show. I normally have it sorted out the day before, but I hadn't done that. And so this morning I was like, oh God, you know, uh, what am I going to talk about this week? I was even tempted to cancel this week. I'll be, you know, to be completely real and vulnerable with you. I was like, maybe I'm just not in that headspace. Um, I need to just, I'm looking forward. I'm having a little week away for my business um, by myself in a couple of weeks. I'm like, I really want that now. I just need that kind of breather. And then I thought about, I was went for a walk. So I thought I need to go for a walk and clear my head and just see if I get inspired. And, and I did. And I was like, and I've got so many different topics that I, um, I know that I can talk about. But there's still times where I'm like, what am I going to talk about today? And so, you know, I literally thought back to this was something that came up in the workshop that I did, which was all about getting rid of your rejection fear and a comment that one of the ladies made about doing videos. And I was like, do you know what? That is great. It's very easy for me to talk about that. It's great value. And it ties in with what I've just been doing this week. And so that's where I kind of created then, well, easy ways that you can start doing video. So just know that A, if you do feel like that and you're like, I just don't know what to say, don't worry, you're not alone. It happens to all of us. Even though I'm experienced and I've got loads of different topics I can talk about, there's still days where I'm just like, oh, what shall I talk about? So my tip for you on that, okay, if that, that goes through your thought, whether you're dabbling in video or maybe you're just trying to get yourself consistent, or again, if you're in that haven't done any videos yet um, or anything like that, then this second tip is really going to help you when it comes to knowing what to talk about. Start off by picking a topic that you're really passionate about and you feel confident talking about, okay? So a big part of coming up with, oh, I just boobed the microphone. <laughs> A big and, you know, a really kind of, um, oh, I can't be off my train of thought then. <laughs> Just as soon as you're having big boobs, you knock things. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, a really great way to kind of start thinking about creating content just in general is thinking about those topics that you do feel confident about. Um and I did a whole episode a few weeks ago about creating content. So definitely go and check out the previous episodes on my blog where you can find, um, I created one about creating a whole year's worth of content and lots of just different stuff uh, with coming up with content ideas. But in the beginning, just really focus on those some of those topics that you feel passionate about. And that you feel confident about. And if, you know, if you and me were going to be sitting in a car together doing a road trip for a few hours, 
what are like the sort of top two or three categories that you could talk about all day long or for several hours and really kind of know your stuff? That's the place I want you to start, okay? That's the place where it's going to be so much easier for you to create videos and do videos with that those topics than trying to sort of force yourself to do something that maybe you're not quite sure about yet. And so even in the beginning, if you're just getting started in your business and maybe you haven't got a lot, a ton of experience yet or low, you know, results that make you feel like you're kind of qualified to to do that. Just know that that's crap. Um, But you will have stuff that you can talk about. There's topics in your life that you are passionate about. There's things that, you know, you started your business for a reason because of some of these things. And you can even just talk about that. So pick topics that you are confident about, okay? And then you can share a couple of tips. It might be a few insights on something that you've learned, Um, you know, things that are valuable and helpful and just create a couple of things. So, you know, like three is a really good number. So today I'm doing three tips. I've done a few others where it's kind of, I have a tendency to make my videos a little bit long. So I'm trying to really work on keeping them shorter. So rather than saying, I'm going to give you seven tips today, that will take the video a lot longer. Whereas if it's kind of three, that's quite a nice number. It's giving people enough value that things that they can take away and implement themselves or just learn from. But do what you feels right for you. I do videos sometimes if I'm reading a book, like a personal development book, and I might just get a really good insight from a certain chapter. I can do a video where I just talk about that and explain a bit about what I took from that chapter. And you can do the same too. But starting where you're passionate and starting in topics that you know your stuff, you are going to not only feel more confident in giving your content and speaking, but just how you sort of hold yourself, you know, and how you show up and how you talk is going to come across so much more confident to both for both you and your um, viewers, you know, your audience, if you start there. So just like I say, pick a couple of tips or something that you can share, a couple of little insights that you've got, and then always make sure that you give some kind of call to action at the end, Um, whether it's um, to just comment or to message you, you, like if you want to promote anything that you're doing, you you can promote people to to message you, or if you've got a link that people can go to, to give some kind of call to action with what do you want people to do next after your video, okay? And I've got a great resource for Facebook Live, which will lead me on into my third one. So I'll talk about that in a second with a couple of great resources that I've got for you today that you can take away to help you with this as well. So number three then is go live. Now, who here, the thought of going live still just gets them a bit twitchy. If I said to you, okay, go and pre-record a video or go live, I'm curious, which one would you opt for if you had to do either one? If you had to go and record a video kind of on your own, edit it and any of those sort of stuff, or go live, I'm really curious. So share with me, which one would you opt to do? Which one would you choose to do? And I want to talk about going live because I used to do um, more pre-recorded videos. So I used, when I very first quit my job, I used to do a weekly blog, like what I'm doing now. Every single week I do this show and I turn it into a blog post and lots of other um, kind of assets to share on social media. But I used to do a pre-recorded video and then make it into a blog post. Now, it probably takes about the same time, maybe actually more, I think, if I was to do a pre-recorded. The reason I would recommend doing live videos over maybe a pre-recorded one is because when you go live, you there's no second chances. There's no editing. 
And I'm saying this as a good thing because the problem is, and I'm sure if you're watching this, you can relate to this if you have done some pre recorded videos. If you try and do a pre recorded video, I bet you probably redone that same video at least three, if not five, sometimes more times. Am I right? I've got, you know, if I look on my phone where I've recorded some videos on my phone, there's like take after take after take. Now, there's a, you know, pre recorded videos, that, again, there's a time and a place for them. It's when it's going to be more effective to do a pre recorded video. But as far as getting started, getting going with doing videos, if you are already feeling that perfectionism, like, oh God, I need to know exactly what to say. I want to look perfect. I want to sound perfect. Then I'm going to challenge you to say, go live instead of doing a pre recorded video because you will just do it. You know, it's like you just, you have to because you're live. I sometimes have to pause and think. And, you know, I might fluff up my words a little bit and things might always not go exactly right. But that's the beauty of it. If I was to pre-record this, I would be editing out all the little, you know, sniffing. I'm like, I've got an itch on my nose, the ums, the ahs, the fuck, I messed that up. You know, you would edit all of that out, which takes more time. But when you go live, you just make it happen. You know, you step into that mode where your mind and your body just does it and does it probably way better than what you ever will think you'll do. So I love live videos. That's why I purposely choose to do this as a live video. I've been very tempted to go, oh, maybe I should do it is something else so I can batch create it. But there is still part of me that I know by going live, it means I have to do it because this is a non-negotiable for me. It makes me more consistent because it's a scheduled live that I do at two o'clock on every Thursday, unless there's absolutely you know a reason that I can't do it. It's my non-negotiable. And so by doing it live, it forces me to not ever fall into, oh, I don't feel like it today. And I was very, I mean, like, even today, even me, I was very tempted today to go, oh, maybe I just won't do it today. And then I reminded myself, no, Jenny, this is your non-negotiable. And I always love doing it. So it's not even like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it. I love doing these. But I love the fact that there is no edits. There's no second chances. And actually, you will do so much better than you probably think you will. Also, I want you to think about if going live, you're like, oh, God, this is really scary. Again, this is about getting started with videos or trying to get yourself more consistent with doing videos, not being so afraid or letting perfectionism get in your way. If perfectionism is one of your downfalls, then live video is going to be for you because it, like I say, it forces you to just go. And so, but also in terms of making things simple and easy and quick for you to do, if it is scary, just go live. And even if you just do five minutes, and again, it could be a little, you know, maybe your first one is just a little introduction into who you are. Tell them a little bit about you, again, what you do, how you help people, what sorts of things people are going to learn from you and get from you and benefit from following you, etc. And then maybe you say, hey, make sure that you're following me and you hit the C first so that you get all the notifications from me. Like that could be very, very simple for you to do. And then think about that tip number two in terms of then your content. And again, you can mix it up, then give some tips. And again, it doesn't have to be long. For me, I my preferred method of doing and creating valuable content is by doing videos. But 
my one of my probably my preferred method of taking in information is probably reading and then like I was listening to a podcast on my walk this morning so there's times when I love listening to stuff because I can carry on and do things whereas with the video you feel like you need to actually be watching it so that's where I'm going to be you know I'm going to be looking at create turning this into a podcast my weekly show into a podcast because you know these videos do tend to be they're full of value. I give so much into these and I know that they can sometimes go up to like 50 minutes. They are full of full of value. So for some people, they might be more inclined to actually listen to the whole thing if it was in a podcast. But I love doing videos, like I say, because I show up in a way um, that I've got energy and I love to kind of see the comments. And I love to see, you know, live stuff and then turn this um, I then, like I say, I repurpose this video into other assets. But I want you to think about, like I say, for you, keep things simple. You don't have to do long videos, but just show up. Just hit that go live button. Have a couple of little tips or something small that you want to talk about. And don't worry if it's five minutes or if it's 15 minutes or if it's 30 minutes. People are like, how long should a live video be? as long as you fucking well want it to be, there is no right or wrong. If it's valuable, people will stay. There is no right or wrong when it comes to length. Yes, we all have the attention spans right now of a flea, <laughs> but there's things that you can do with it. But whatever is going to help you to actually do it, then do it. If having doing short little videos is going to be more, um, it's going to be easier for you to do it. Awesome. Do that. Utilize stories. If you want to have a, have a go at doing reels again, you can do reels where you're not on video. You can just sharing a couple of tips and stuff and you, and you not even talk. You can just point, you can point to stuff and have the little text bubbles. Um, you know, so you can even just do a one minute video, but they can sometimes take a little while to do but they are quite fun. So, but I love live videos because it forces you to show up and there's just something happens. I have to try and research what the actual thing is, but you just get it done. It's like, if I said to you, go and stand in the, in like on a stage or go into a room and suddenly just start talking to people, even if you were petrified, you would be able to do it. You would do it. And that's the beauty about live video. So certainly that's great for perfectionism because it gets that out of the way. When I used to do my pre-recorded videos, I would do my hair, do my makeup, and I would record a few at the same time, which I did love the batching side. Um, where, but now I made not looking perfect something that came out of my head because I know if I was to, if I was to say, well, I can't do a video unless I look great, um, I would certainly do a lot less videos because I can't be bothered to put makeup on every day and make my hair. I mean, I wash my hair every other day. Today is a hair up day, but I don't care. You know, I mean, I look all right. I've got my skin's okay. My glasses are quite a nice sort of frame but you know it doesn't bother me it does not bother me and that was something I got over but initially I was like oh god I need to look perfect I need to look professional I need to sound professional um so I talked a lot about that in last week's episode about um that authenticity and really showing up as yourself and not giving a shit and that really helps to to do videos is when you can take out that but I need to look perfect, sound perfect. It needs to be perfect. And one of the ladies in this workshop that we did, she, she had a great line with, with doing pre-recorded videos is when you're then editing it and you're redoing it and redoing it and it will never be perfect. So by switching it for live videos, if you get that out of your head, it's probably going to take you, save you a lot of time because you're not going to be redoing it over and over again and trying to make it perfect, okay? So that's kind of the three tips I wanted to share. So if you are brand new and you haven't really done many videos yet, but you kind of know that 
I feel like I need to be doing it. Start small and simple. Utilize stories. If you want to have a play with reels, then you can do. But I would say in terms of the simplest of things to do would be stories. Number two is know your know your content. So pick a few topics that you feel really, really confident about that you t- could talk about all day long. And even if your notes flew off out the way and you were like, oh my God, I haven't got my notes, you could talk about really easily. And so you will feel much more confident when you're giving your tips or insights or whatever message you want to give to people that day. If you kind of know that you know your stuff when it comes to that particular topic, something that you're really passionate about, it's going to be much easier for you to create that video. And then number three is utilize live video. So it forces you to show up. It makes you get that perfectionism out of the way because you can't, there's no do-overs. There's no edits. You can edit it later if you were like, I take my live video, I edit it a bit and take out any stuff that isn't necessarily for kind of replay stuff, you know, and I upload it to YouTube and Instagram. Um, I don't do much editing, but I'll do just some stuff that's necessary. So you can edit it later, repurpose for other platforms, but the live piece, you will show up, you will do a better job than probably what you ever think you you will, because something just happens and we just do it. So I would recommend live videos and stories and really try to work on that perfectionism. And what is it that's really causing you to not want to do them, to have this maybe fear of, I need to be perfect. Or maybe it's this kind of fear of judgment. People are going to judge you if you're not. So there's a couple of resources that I want to give to you this week that kind of covers this topic. Firstly, there is still, you can still access the workshop that I actually did on, um, was it yesterday? What day is it today? Thursday? No, it was Tuesday. So two days ago, I did a workshop and there is replay access for two weeks. So just under two weeks now, um, you can get access to that. Okay. The price has gone up, but it was an amazing workshop, which was all about helping you to rid your rejection fear. So if that fear of showing up and doing videos and doing things on social media, because you're worried about what people think and that you want things to be perfect and you're worried about people rejecting you or calling you out, definitely go and check that out. Okay. I'll put all the resources in the show notes. Um, You can go to jennystevenscoaching.com slash rejection. If you want to get access to that workshop, it was amazing. It was really, really powerful. Um, And you get an amazing hypnosis recording that you can listen to that will help to really help you Um, change your own sort of beliefs about yourself and how you show up. Okay, so highly recommend that. Um, And then in terms of live videos, because there are, you know, there are some things that can be really, really helpful for doing live videos. So inside of my Brilliantly You Business Hub, which is a free kind of resource library, um, inside of there, I have a fab Facebook Live checklist. And so it helps you to all the things to do kind of before, during and after your live video with some tips about how to, you know, how to really utilize your live videos. Um, There's that's a great checklist that can help you. So if you would like that, again, just comment below or check around this video if this is after this, the live for the link to the show notes. And I'll put a link so you can sign up for an account for that free resource library and go and grab that fab Facebook live checklist. And that will really help you as well with some structure to your Facebook lives. Like I say, what to do before, before it to try and get people there live, things to do during in terms of structure of your life, and then how you can then things to do afterwards as well. So you can really maximize that work. We're all, all about leveraging your time and getting you, you know, getting more out of what you're doing. So I'll put both of those resources in the show notes. So the show notes is what I put together. I put a replay of this video. And then at the bottom, there's a written summary for those people that maybe don't like videos and like to read, or if you want to refer back to it later. And then I give a resources section for anything that's going to be useful for you um, to take this topic and move forward with it even more. 
if this you're watching this and it's afterwards, uh, do check around this video in the descriptions of the area on the relevant platform and there'll be a link to any resources and also those show notes. So go and check that out and grab those resources and help you out, like I say, to really help you start doing videos, get more consistent at doing them and doing them more confidently and get that perfectionism out the way so you can really show up. Because at the end of the day, we want people to see, to know that you're there. You've got some awesome offers that you want to help people with product services, you know, coaching, whatever you do, but people need to know that you're there. And video is the quickest way for you to build your relationship with people. It's the quickest way for you to be able to get, for them to get to know you, to build that rapport. It, it builds trust much quicker when it's from video because they get to see you and hear you and get to know you. So I high, highly encourage you to get going with videos. And like I say, there's so many awesome, fun ways that you can utilize videos. There was a, just a couple of things there for you today. Um, so yeah, go and have fun with it. Go and just have a go. And I'd love to hear from you what you do with it and what kind of method you find actually is helping you to get going with it. So do share that with me below. Um, and share with me again, you know, if you kind of watch this later on um, and you start doing things, please share that with me. I'd love to kind of see how you're going to take take this and run with it and start getting yourself out there more so people can see you to be the awesome person that you are. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, oh, yeah. So Susanna says, yes, live is good to have it done. Absolutely. It's great to do it. So Janice also says you prefer to do lives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Janice said I spit my coffee out. I think that was with the boob thing. Yeah. Um, and wonderful session. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I hope you found this useful. Please feel free to share the love. If you want to share this video or tag anybody in it, feel free to share it with anyone else that you think might find it useful. Thank you so much for joining me. Go and smash your videos. Have some fun with it. Get yourself out there because people need to see you and hear your message and how you can help them today. So go and challenge yourself and have some fun with it. And I'll see you all next time on our next episode of the Brilliant New Business Show. Take care, have an amazing day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.